Right, good afternoon people. Um, I'll be doing some demonstration on how to read out the BIOS chip on any or most laptop motherboards. I'll be using an oscilloscope to show you the patterns, the, the signals, and I'll also be using the multimeter to show you the voltages, okay? Uh, for demonstration purposes, I've got a, a BIOS uh, diagram here, basically, and I keep it short and simple, okay? On the left-hand side, what? well, in fact, how do, we, what, how do you read out the pinouts on an actual item? The actual item, the physical item, will have four legs on either side, okay? Depending on the type of BIOS chip you have. This is a SOT8, basically, so that this will have four legs on either side. You will notice that on the physical item that there's a little engraved dot, and the pin count is anti-clockwise from that dot. So it'll start, pretend that there is a, a dot there. So one, two, three, four, move on to the other side, five six seven and pin eight okay but on the diagram is a little bit different okay what we have here on the left hand side is is various signals that's going backwards and forwards from the pch basically so 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 will be going it's an output signal uh the the rest of the 3d clock is is coming in basically but we'll, we'll go and have a look at it on the oscilloscope for more data on the schematic you will be able to ref go into various pages to try and establish what those uh, are but they'll lead to the pch basically uh what's important here is the the three volt basically on the vdd uh, these these sometimes can be seen as uh, VCC as well, so do bear that in mind. And uh, the the supply voltage should be on an average about three volt, basically. Uh, that is just to hold. The VSS is ground, and WP stands for the bias right protection, basically. Okay, so let's not get too carried away with that. Let's have a look at the physical item. Now you will see some some BIOS will have different things written on it okay some will say uh, say CLK which stands for serial clock input some will say D1 that's uh, serial data input some will say DO which is uh, serial data output uh, the CS uh, the chip enable now did we have a CS here there should should be a chip enable on one of those uh, data so CE could be the chip enable um, but again it's, it's just I don't understand why these manufacturers have different ways of writing things. It's just making things more complicated for somebody who wants to have a basic knowledge of what's going on, basically. Right, so putting that to a side, let's sort of uh, look at, let's sort of power this laptop on and show you what's going on with the pinouts, basically. So before moving on to that, I've got my charger plugged in because I've got a busy day, so I need to sort of make sure that I'm not getting too trolled with this okay so on the bias chip i don't know if you can see this okay, let me grab a tweezer if i if i have if i missed there it is okay found it what do we have here okay so there's two bias i'll be focusing on the main primary bias here okay and what you will see is a little dot there on the corner right so for me that's that's my pin one two three four five six seven and eight Okay, so I'll be going in anti-clockwise orientation on that, right? So let's put... I've, I'm struggling with space. That's, that's one of the reasons why I tend to not to upload a lot of videos, but at the same time, just, just, just... It kind of stresses me out, basically. So, right, okay. So let's power up the laptop. But before doing so... Let's just, just by default, pretend that these are all plugged in, okay? And the unit is off. What sort of voltages am I expecting? Right, so let's, multimeter, connect to the ground and see what voltage I'm expecting on each pin out without the laptop being turned on. Both the power and the, uh, the uh, charger is plugged in and the battery is plugged in, okay? Let's, let's see what we get here, all right? So first thing first is pin number one. I'm gonna take these gloves off because that, well, I'm getting 3.1 volt. So I'm going to keep keep it to the first two sort of numbers. It's, it just gets to be 3.1545, blah, blah. I'm, I don't, so it's, I've, I've got about 3 volt here. Pin 1. Pin 2, 0 0.5. And you can see, you can see the, the voltage, so I'm not going to sort of uh, bore you with that. Pin number 3. Pin number 4, 0 volt. 
pin number five, pin number six, pin number seven, and pin number eight. Okay, just remeasure that. Okay, so that's the voltage showing on the BIOS chip. Now, some of this voltage will be signals, so don't sort of think that they're just a solid voltage, there'll be signals that's going into the BIOS. And the only way to determine that is to use, use an oscilloscope, basically. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna turn the laptop on. Okay, so I do hear the uh, laptop coming on. I'll have to bear with me because these laptops, some laptops don't have a BIOS chip. Uh, sorry, the BIOS a battery, so it, when you take the battery, the main battery off, it'll go through several restart process before it can actually sort of uh, start and display an image, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for that to happen. Let's create a bit of space. I just want to keep this as short as possible because with the broadband at the moment, um, I'm struggling to upload anything that's large. Okay, so we have a display. Let me see if I can show you this. Light back lights are on and you can just about see the display yep so the laptop is on and I hope I don't short anything out see everything's everywhere absolutely utter nightmare okay so I've already established what the voltages are laptop is on now let's see let's see what voltages we get now Now I am going to put my glasses on because I've not slept today, so eyes a bit tired. Okay, so pin number one, 2.8, and it's fluctuating. Pin number two, pin number three, pin number four. Pin number five, pin number six, pin number seven, and pin number eight. Now, what have you noticed? Because the laptop was turned off, there are a lot of data lines that weren't sort of outputting the signals or generating the communication signal between the uh, BIOS and the PCH, basically. And as a result of that, the, the voltage has, has now changed on certain pins, except the pin number eight. And uh, pin number, let's just confirm that pin number, yes. So, so pin number eight is, 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 the, is the supply, which is the VDD. That hasn't changed, but everything else has. Okay, so the laptop is still on. Let me just check. Yep, the display is still on. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a oscilloscope and show you how to understand sort of how to understand the or oh, a functional of a, a uh, working BIOS basically and the the pattern of the signals basically so let's sort of uh, hook this onto the ground there, there's some awesome videos online how to sort of set up your oscilloscope basically so it's more of a, a generalized setup so you can actually sort of uh, you use that setup to um, view a uh, diagnose most laptops basically so my probe is set to one times on here okay and uh, <clears throat> let me see if you can see what I'm doing yep okay I wish I can sort of uh, show you the voltages but this 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 is too small um, in fact let me see if I can zoom in you'll just have to take me word for it Hope you can see that but these are some of the measurements that it will show but I mean th this will fluctuate based on my settings here so I've given you the voltage readout anyway so I wouldn't bother with that with the oscilloscope basically right so let's let's read um just make sure everything's connected yet let's read pin one ok 
Okay. And what's important is just before jumping onto that is the, the part number from the IC. If you type that on, t on the internet, you'll get the data sheet, and the data sheet will give you exact uh, pin out of what's what basically. Okay. Now. Because I haven't got the circuit diagram for this, but this was a different circuit diagram for a different board. Uh, the, 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 the pinouts, near enough, you might have a little bit of a change here and there, but it's not going to be significant. Okay, so as I said, if you want to cross reference what these pinouts are fully, go online, type in the part number 25Q, whatever it is, 16 or 64, whatever it is, F, F, V, I, S, O, or whatever it is, right? Okay, you will find the data sheet on it. Okay, so let's go back onto the uh, read the oscilloscope. Okay, that's the signal what I'm seeing on pin one. I'm going to increase the so you can see the signal. I've set my volt for one volt per division, and that's the type of signal what's expected from pin one. Okay, move on to pin two. My hands are slipping, and that is on pin two. Remember, the laptop is on the batteries connected and the chargers connected. Okay. Pin number three. Pin number four. Nothing. Okay. Now, remember, the multimeter will only show you the voltages, but it won't show you the signal. Now, there's two different concepts here. The signals are, are a different concept to the voltages. The voltages may be there, but the signals are not, are not getting generated. So the only way you can establish whether if there's a signal being generated is to use a oscilloscope. That's an absolute must, basically. Pin number six. Pin number seven. Sorry, I do apologise. That was pin number five. Okay, so I'll start again. I've gone up to pin number four. Uh, my apologies. I made a mistake here. Pin number five. Pin number six. Pin number seven. And pin number eight. Now remember, pin number eight is the supply to supply three volt supply for the uh, for the bias chip. So it won't show any sort of uh, signaling or anything going up and down and so and so forth. Basically, so do remember that. Um, so that's that's how I, I that that is a working BIOS basically. If there is any signal missing, then you'll have to backtrack looking at the schematic, or you'll have to backtrack uh, why that signal has been gen not been generated. Now, on on most of the BIOS BIOS, if you look at the first part of the schematic, the BIOS is actually controlled by the PCH basically. Um, let me sort of go back on here. Now, it, there is this is an old uh, what we're in a Sky Lake, is it? Yeah. yeah, okay. I mean, in this case, it's it's not the piece. Of, some generation of board will uh, will control, but the the bias chip will be controlled by the uh, PC. Uh, H, others will be controlled by the CPU. Now, in this case, the way to establish that is, is to look at the circuit diagram, and that in itself will tell you what, what's been controlled by what. So on, on the circuit diagram, you've got the first summary page of showing you what's what, basically. So let me sort of uh, give you a quick overview of what's going on, okay? So if you look here, oh, I don't accidentally press the uh, stop recording button. I've done that in the past, and I just, okay, so that's your Skylight processor and look where it says SPI interface and that's your SPI BIOS basically. So it is a dual BIOS uh, on the board but if you look here that's that. Uh, if I scroll down to page number 10 and you look here you've got your SPI main BIOS and you're supporting BIOS basically. Now because these the, the motherboard CPU is 
built in with the PCH, the the South Bridge and the North Bridge and the graphic and everything else. Okay, the downside is that <coughs> if one section of that, if the cheese, if if the PCH section fails and the CPU is just, the board is dead, you've got to replace the entire CPU. So things have things have gone for better but also gone for worse. Whereas in the older generation board, if the PCH is gone, uh, you can replace that. If the North Bridge is gone, replace it. If the South Bridge is gone, replace it. Okay? So so usually the North Bridge would control your, say, um, for example, the DDR, your RAM, RAM your graphic, um, your South Bridge would control all your auxiliaries like your USB ports and so and so forth basically. But unfortunately these days, they've only, they've embedded everything into one die right so this is the basic understanding do re, do you do you, you know do your own research you can't go wrong um, it's just that pity that that sometimes you're stuck with diagrams that you can't find and uh, you know it makes it a lot easier to understand what's going on don't get frightened with looking at these diagrams and these these pinouts what the friggin hell is all that basically um, and do your own research and be confident at doing what you do and you will learn trust me it's it's, it's nobody spoon feed me I had to learn everything and I'm still learning you know I'm, I might be making a mistake you know here as I speak right nobody's an expert I'm not an expert I'll speak for myself I'm not an expert I'm still learning there's no limitation of learning. So do sort of uh, research, make notes because that's a very crucial thing. We're human and we forget things very quickly. I've got a diary here full of notes that I've made previously um, and I still make notes because new board comes out with new things and how much do you remember? It's a brain. You know, you don't want to overstress it, overfill it. Otherwise you'll end up with having a bloody um, stroke or something like that. You'll collapse. Right, just relax, easy, make notes, references, which you can go back and re, re your memory. And that's what I do, you know, and, and that's what I, how I go through my learning process. Um, anyway, guys, this was, again, this was a quick demonstration on, on uh, how to sort of uh, look at the function of a BIOS chip and the signals as well. Anyway, you take care. Bye for now. I'll catch up with you in the next video.